record is hit. Go ahead. Okay. Well, good evening, everyone. So you signed up to be a club coach, and now you wonder, what now? Or you've been a club coach for several months, and you're feeling probably a little overworked and maybe underappreciated. Um, and you're, you aren't sure you've had an impact. Your leadership um, is really critical to saving this club, yet maybe it's burning you out and burning you up. Today, our distinguished guest, a woman who was born in D.C., raised in Bethesda, Maryland, and attended the University of Delaware, Carol Prohinsky, will share insights on how we can become an exceptional club coach to save our struggling club. Carol Prohinsky has been a Toastmaster for nine years and is the advisor for Region 6, which includes 20,000 Toastmasters across Michigan, Northern Ohio, Ontario, Quebec, and a tiny bit of New York. She led the transformation of several clubs, including Insights of Brighton, from six members to 21, C Division Advanced Speakers, from eight members to 24, MSU Simply Speaking, from six members to 24 members, and Spartan, which she started coaching this year, from eight members. She graduated from Second City Improv in 2010. She earned Toastmaster of the Year in 2011 and three Distinguished Toastmaster Awards in 2012, 2016, and 2017. On Michigan State University campus, Dr. Prohensky loves to teach undergraduates purchasing and the capstone course in supply management, supply chain management. This evening, Carol will share her thoughts on how we can become a great club coach. Please give a warm welcome to the Region Advisor for Region 6, Carol Prohensky. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> All right, I, because of this sound, background sound, I'm gonna go ahead and mute you at this time, everybody. Um, and Danielle, I'm gonna take you off of mute, so if you wanna jump in at any point, you, you can. Um, for this, uh, we will have lots of breaks that if you wanna ask a question, feel free to ask a question. We also have a chat feature. I, I don't know if you noticed it, it's under the more option, and you could go in there, and if you wanna chat, you can. Is there any questions at this point? No. no. Okay. All right. Let no. me go ahead and I'm going to mute you, um, but you can always get yourself unmuted or you can type in chat or I'm going to have periods of time where I unmute you. Let's see. All right. Let's see. Let me open the chat feature so I have that open in case you guys start writing on it. Okay. Let's go ahead into our program. So what does it mean to be a club coach? Well, I'd like to use the analogy of a sports coach. And here I'm showing a picture of a young boy who's getting educated on how to hold his arm um, so that he can catch the balls in baseball. This adult is, is guiding him and this individual, this young child is getting this very detailed show of how to be successful as a club coach i'm sorry as a as a baseball player and so with this guidance this young man will become a better player over many years and many guidances of different coaches along the journey when we follow the leadership track we need guidance too and so when our club is struggling we have a club coach come into the club and guide individuals on how not necessarily where to put the arm but how to make sure that we're successful as a leader so that's that's the purpose of our coach but notice that the club I'm sorry, the sports coach doesn't work just with team players. They are also working with the team. So this coach is focused on making sure that the entire team is working together successfully. And if not, then the club coach says, hey, come out, let's, let's have a recap, let's have a conversation, let's solve some problems so that when we go out there on that field that we're working well together. The same thing happens in a club coach environment. So the club coach is making sure the individuals are using their leadership skills well, that they're managing the roles as a club officer properly, and they're also making sure that the team of officers is working successfully together. 
the, both of those matter. And so they're looking at it from a strategic perspective as well as from an operational perspective. Now, when we're looking at our goals as a club coach, we need to make sure that we are achieving them. So what exactly do we need to do to be successful as a club coach? Well, Toastmasters International has said your goal is to achieve distinguished status by June 30th of this year or by June 30th of the following year of your appointment. So you have up to two years to be a club coach. Um, to be your club coach. And so your job is to bring that club to distinguished status in that period of time. So I initially thought I had two years solid, but remember that we only, we only classify clubs as distinguished at the end of the fiscal year, which is as April, May, and June. Um, so it's only in that time frame. So we only have up to two years. Now on the bottom of these slides, for those of you listening on telephone, I'll, I'll be describing everything that is on my slides. Um, but for those of you that are following the slides, I have these little toggle buttons and I will show you where I am in the presentation. So I'm organizing it before, during, and then after your assignment as a club coach. So your goals in my mind to be an exceptional club coach is that this club must achieve a net growth of five or more members without you doing the work. The club must achieve at least five distinguished club points without you doing the work. And the club is healthy now and forever after into the future. So they're gonna be a happily ever after. Um, because the last thing we want is to do all of this work and then have the club flounder after you leave as a club coach. Um, we don't want that. And our district leaders don't want that. They want this club to be successful now and into the future. So my perspective is long term. When I'm going into helping a club, I expect that this club will be achieving success or I just simply won't leave it. I'll make sure that they, they are okay before I walk away from it or if I need to walk away. All right, so here's our agenda before, during, and after. I talked about that. Um, and I'm gonna split it up. So sometime I'll be talking about the club and sometime I'll talk about it from the coach's perspective. So I'll be bouncing back and forth in that direction. All right, so what is it, the prerequisites for the club? The club must be between one and 12 paid members. The club, is, so the club cannot be at zero. The club can't be at 13 for you to be assigned as a club coach. The, co the club is eligible to receive up to two coaches, and the club, if they're interested in receiving a coach, needs to reach out to district leaders and ask specifically the club coach director, which is Danielle, or your district director for a coach. Area directors, um, if I know we have a couple on the line tonight. Um, area directors, you should let the officers know of the clubs that are at 12 or less I'm sorry, 12 or fewer paid members, let them know that they're eligible for a club coach. Many times the clubs don't even know that they're eligible and they're floundering. They don't know that help is available to them. And I have to say that with a little caveat because it's only available if there are people signing up to be a club coach. So that's their other job is to be looking for people that are interested in perhaps being a club coach. And let me talk about that in just a few slides. All right, so let's talk about the clubs in District 36 that are eligible for a club coach right now. All right, so I've listed them on a couple different slides. Um, this slide here that we have in front of us is for one to eight paid members. These are what we would consider the most critical. So Danielle and I were just talking about it, and so some of these clubs may simply have failed to pay their dues in a timely way. Um, so we need to make sure that they get their dues paid um, and then, on the other hand, some of them are struggling and they need desperately to have a club coach sign in and help them with their success. So I, just as an example, I see it here in Ashton, we've got Robert Kennedy that signed up to be a club coach in Division E. And thankfully, he's able to be there to help that club succeed. That club desperately needs a coach. They are technically eligible for a second coach. Um, and we see here down here at the Department of Health and Human Services that they already have two coaches. Yay, um, they're not eligible to receive another two or another one coach. Um, they're at their full capacity as, as getting coaches. Um, but it's always nice to, if 
you can to support those individuals as they're coaching this club. Um, we always like to have a little outside support to say, I'm cheering for you, how's it going? Um, that sort of conversation. Okay, so the next couple of slides I'm gonna show are the district clubs that are between nine and 12 paid members. And so here I'm showing division A, B, and most of C. I mistakenly left one of C off, and that's on the next slide. Um, but you'll notice there's no club coaches listed except for one, and it's called Speak, Lead, Serve out of division C. So for division A and B, and I'm gonna say for C as well, reach out and find club coaches because these clubs desperately need coaches. I'm going to say desperately. I hope you don't mind my word choice. Um, they need help. And it's always nice to have people available to step in and we need to know who they are. And so I'm saying that for da Danielle's behalf, um, but definitely communicate that to her. Right, let me go on to division. There's that one club for division C. And then we've got D and E on this slide. John, I see you listed. I, I recognize your name when you signed on. Easy Tech Toastmasters. I am so cheering for you. I'm hoping everything goes smoothly as you coach. Feel free at any point that you can ask me questions. Um, and the same for the other coaches that happen to be on the line. Ask me questions. Um, and we can talk specifically about your situation if I don't address it on in this area. Okay, and then the last slide here has Division F and Division G. And I see Ramu, I don't think Ramu's on the line tonight, um, but th th this is um, again an opportunity for club coaches to step out to say, I'm interested, sign me up. Now, I'm gonna talk about why a person might wanna sign up for this, and that's coming up soon. I just wanna leave this slide up for a second while you guys glance at it. And for those of you on the phone, you can get these slides. I'll be giving the recording to Danielle tonight and she'll get them posted for you. It'll be on a YouTube account and you can go ahead and, and review the list at any time. In case you're wondering, this list was updated as of today. Um, so these are the current clubs that are between one and 12 paid members. Let's get that changed, yay. All right, so are you born to be a coach? Uh, we in Toastmasters know that we're not born natural speakers. So we sign up for Toastmasters hoping to improve our speaking skills, and we do. It's the same thing with leadership. We're not born an exceptional coach. We practice those skills to become exceptional. This is an our opportunity to practice them. I like to try something if it doesn't work if people start griping about it i pay attention and then i make some changes because i know and you know that we're not perfect at this and so we keep trying if something's not right we'll keep twisting and, and working at it to get it right now the prerequisites to become a club coach the coach cannot be a member of the club at the time of the appointment the club coach director or the district director will be the person submitting that official club coach assignment to world headquarters. Now, area directors and division directors, your job is really to help make sure that if we have people interested in becoming a club coach, that this information gets fed to Danielle so that she can make the official assignment. Um, and so that's what your role is, is simply to say, hey, I've got somebody who's willing to be a club coach. I don't have any clubs available for them, but let's keep them in mind. And the other part is, is hey, I've got a club that needs a coach and they've expressed interest and I'll keep looking for a club coach. Um, and division directors, this is where you also help with that, is finding a club coach to be assigned to that specific club. Now make sure it's a good fit before the actual assignment. You want to make sure that that is a good fit. So what else do you need to be assigned as a club coach? Well, I'm going to say you need to be at any stage of the leadership progress. You can be a beginner all the way through to, you know, five DTMs. One of the most essential skills is that you're a good listener. You listen, and you listen some more. You're not just listening to the words, you're listening to body language, you're trying to interpret what are they meaning that there's not always said in words. Second point is that you're developing a variety of alternatives for the club officers to solve their own problems. Many times when a struggling club is fighting for survival, they don't realize that they have more options than than anything. They just don't realize that they have these other options. And so your job is to simply say, are you aware that you could also do this, this, or this? And just telling them that the world is wider than they are seeing. 
Uh, your third point here is that you're supporting a healthy and flub, uh, sorry, fun club environment. So you want to be cheering them on. You want to be, yay, yay, keep up the good work. Or I noticed we had three guests tonight. Fantastic job. Um, it's not always cheerleading, though, and I, I'll talk more about that later, is that we do need to be direct in giving our feedback to the leaders um, so that they can continue to improve their skills. All right, but let's go on to the fourth point. The fourth point is that this person needs to understand what it means to be an officer, and they need to understand the meeting roles. So they need to understand what each of the officers are supposed to be doing, and they can guide the officers on how to do their job. There are times that we do need to step into that teaching mode versus times that we need to be more of a, um, a listener and helping support them in terms of, I saw you do this today, and my suggestion would be to make some adjustments to that. All right. The fifth bullet, bullet point here is that we're understanding club goals and how to achieve them. That's the Distinguished Club Program that we talked about earlier. All right, so why do, why do people want to be a club coach? Let me tell you, this is not an easy assignment. It is, in my mind, one of the most difficult and challenging assignments, yet I keep signing up for it. Why is that? Because I get so much benefit by being a club coach, but it is not easy. So the reason many people sign up the first time is they say, hey, I need to get a certificate credit towards my Advanced Leader Silver Award, and I want to make sure I get my DTM before we change over to the Revitalized Education Program. So I'm on my path, and I want to make sure I complete it um, within the next two years. That's usually why people sign up, and that's a good reason. Um, the second reason people sign up is they, they, they say, oh, I want public acknowledgement, hey, that I'm doing a great job and that I'm successful with this. All uh, right, maybe, maybe that's not you, but it's a couple people. Um, third point is we like to get um, credit possibly towards our high performance leadership project. And let me talk a little bit about that. When we are signing up for um, being a club coach, that doesn't mean you automatically get a high performance leadership project at the same time. Nope. A high performance leadership project is a specific project that you're doing and that you are leading others to enable the project to be successful. So you have to pick a project and let's say it's something like hosting an open house and you are getting the officers to do the work because you're not doing the work. You're leading them and you guide them on how to have a successful open house, and you teach them how to do it, and then you have this successful open house, and then you talk about what worked and what didn't work afterwards, and then you complete your high performance leadership project. All right, so it's a specific project with a start point and an end point. Now, a fourth bullet point is that you wanna enhance your leadership and coaching skills. For me, that's one of the reasons I keep signing up, is I keep learning. And then the last point is that there's a sense of pride in a job well done. They, sometimes there's a, a number of sayings that say the leader is the person who's in behind the scenes, not getting credit for the work that's been done. And in many respects, that is what a coach is doing, is that we're trying to be behind the scenes. But when we need to step forward, we do. And when we need to guide individuals, we, we have that behind the scene conversation to help them improve their skill set. Okay, let's, let me pause at this point and see if you have any questions. I'm gonna take everybody off of mute. Let's see, where is that? Unmute all. all. There you go. And if you have any questions, go ahead and ask. I see a lot of phone people. You know my name? Okay, Martha. I'm gonna get started. For, thank you. Okay, your name? Um, Rebecca. Oh, hi, Rebecca. Rebecca. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been sending the videos of like TED videos and they like that. But um, my club is Department of Health and Human Services and they're mm. at two members, as you can tell from, mm. from the, if you can see it. Yeah. Um, and they, they, they're, they're very, um, their morale is really low there because they don't have time for lunch. Mm. And there's a lot of members that don't have a lot. So my, my question is, um, I, and I actually got, I got the day agency to pay for their, for their due. So that's a really good thing. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just that they, they, a lot of people don't come back and they, they have a high number before, but they're all contractors. So they all like left, mm -hmm. left it too. Mm -hmm. 
So what are your recommendations for what I should do? Okay. Um, well, with two members, one of the th suggestions I would have is um, see if you could get a couple people to help you out just by every now and then dropping in on the club. Okay. I would also suggest that you don't have the department pay for the membership dues. I know it sounds maybe backwards to you, but one of the right. things that is really important is that they are fiscally invested in the club and it really does help i see a difference um, when people have somebody else pay for it they come and then they're gone you know a couple meetings later they stop coming so that would be my suggestion for you right off the bat when they said that they don't have time for lunch that was ringing a bell for me as well ask them to bring their lunch with them and eat there um, the other thing you could do is shorten the meeting and maybe have two meetings a week at half an hour each. Mm -hmm. And that allows them to have a little bit more time so that they can also go to the bathroom um, if needed. But those would be some of my suggestions. I, I do know of a club that had three meetings a week, half hour each, and they're very strong. They've been very strong for years. Um, it's different. It's a different model, but it, it's, it works for them. Okay, I did hear another person had a question. It was a male voice. My name is Mark, yes, and I am actually coaching the Speak, Lead, and Serve in mm -hmm. only. I mentioned they have no uh, assigned uh, coach. I'm the one. Oh, Mark, I had you listed for a coach. Maybe I put it down for the wrong one. Maybe. I thought I mentioned you specifically. Okay, great. Yeah, so maybe I misunderstood because I heard that the Speak, Lead, and Serve have no Coach, but I, my you know, my apologies if I made a mistake, Mark. It was certainly not my intention. <laughs> yeah, right. The thing is that we are always in the process of improving communication, so I must have not heard the. No, no, uh, Mark. I'm sure you heard just fine. I apologize. I must have made a mistake there. Okay, thanks. So, how's your club doing, Mark? We, uh, you know, what is uh, interesting? I think Eric Brand is the president. Uh, one of the presence and he's a very good uh, leader and he's a friend of mine and uh, there are, there is a path uh, uh, there are several people who are seasoned speakers we do not have enough people because it used to be a different club that in Geico we used to have people who finished serving their um, <laughs> leadership and they were coming but now I think we are working to have uh, three four more members and what I like about the club is that they have very innovative and very sometimes not only innovative but novel ideas uh, last uh, month we had for instance learning how to use the telebeam um, and having the uh, practice of this so i think that the club is very uh, interesting yep. it's very uh, dynamic but the thing is not strong in terms of attracting people it is meeting in the church in <coughs> Yes, uh, yeah. Go ahead, Mark. As you mentioned, I've learned. Uh, I've been learning a lot, so I do uh, just echo everything you're saying. So, mm -hmm. uh, okay. Well, Mark, I'm cheering for you. I remember Olney very well. I used to go there many years because my parents lived there for a while. So I'm, oh. I'm cheering for you. Where do you live now? My parents uh, have moved uh, for a while. They lived in Annapolis and now my dad, my mom has passed away. My dad has just moved. He's living over by, um, oh, terrible, New Hampshire Avenue in the Beltway, not too far from there. Not far from White Oaks? Oaks? Yeah, White Oak area. Thank you. That's the name of it. He's living in the White, <laughs> he's moved into a retirement community. I see. So for me, it is a little bit of a hide because I live in we, my wife and I live in Falls Church, but uh, mm, that's a very uh, long hike. <laughs> and, but it's worth investment. It's a lot of fun. It's a breakfast type of thing, and mm -hmm. people are very supportive. And so I like this, and it's good, uh, good gathering. Excellent. Well, fantastic, Mark. Is there anybody else that would like to ask a question? Okay, not hearing anybody. I'm going to go ahead and mute all again, and let's continue with our presentation. All right, so I so see we just finished this slide on why would a coach want to sign up, 
And now I'm going to go over to the Distinguished Toastmaster Award. I touched on this earlier, so we've got this new Pathways program. How will the club coach responsibility change with the new Pathways program? Um, the club coach, in the current education program, the club coach is one of the three roles that you can take to achieve your advanced leader silver. The other two are the new club sponsor or the new club mentor. So all three of them will solve your advanced leader, I say solve, but it'll fill that responsibility that you need to accomplish. The new club sponsor and the new club mentor is when a club is just starting out and they are fun. It is so nice to be part of a new club because there's so much energy and craziness. Um, the club coach though is not the same and usually you're walking into a club environment that is not as happy um, and we talked about that just a few minutes ago is that we have people that have been working hard and they're tired. Um, so your job is to add energy and vive them up, you know, vive them back up. I don't know if that's a word, I just made a word. All right, so when we look at the, the new Pathways program, they're actually splitting this and they're gonna ask us to do two different things. One of them is you can be either a club coach or the new club mentor, which is the first six months of the new club after it's chartered. And you must also be a new club sponsor or complete a speech craft project or a youth leadership project. So with the new program, you're gonna have to do a little bit more than what we've had in the past. It, you'll be fine. You can do this. Um, now, the other thing I wanted to talk about is my understanding is that the club coach responsibility, let's say you decide to be club coach this year, you complete your assignment, the Pathways program is just getting started, and, and you think, hmm, I'm, I didn't finish my Distinguished Toastmaster under the old program. I'm, I'm moving ourselves out a couple years, in case you're wondering. Um, will my club coach uh, check mark, will it go away? Um, or can I carry it into the new pathways program? My understanding is that you can take that into the new pathways program. If you don't get your DTM now, you can apply it to um, the new pathways program. That's my understanding. And so I got my fingers crossed that it is accurate <laughs> and we will learn more as we continue and progress through the uh, education of our, our pathways program. So let me talk about my first visit, my first club as an area director that I went to, um, it was called Insights of Brighton, and as it was mentioned in my, Danielle mentioned it in my introduction, it, it started officially with six members. When I showed up there, there was only three. Um, that was three, you know, two people, uh, well, two guys and a girl, and the, uh, one of the guys was presenting, and he was the Toastmaster of the day. He talked on and on and on for about 20 minutes, and it reminded me very much of Charlie Brown's uh, teacher. Wow, well, well, I don't mean to be negative, but it was a difficult, it was a difficult meeting. Um, then he introduced the speaker, the speaker got up and presented, um, then we had a little bit of table topics, and then we had uh, the evaluation. Things seemed to go, you know, so fairly smoothly after that, but it, they clearly wanted guidance that was showing to me and they asked for a lot of information and as soon as I was able to give them some guidance they immediately applied it I saw I saw it in action just a few minutes later um, I was pretty impressed so it, here it was my first visit and this club was not in good shape I was told by the way by my predecessor oh yeah all of the clubs are in great shape you won't have any problems at all and then I show up and here it is all right this is I'm going to actually call it somewhat normal. You will have, usually as an area director, you will have one or two clubs that aren't in the best shape. Your job is to help them get to be successful. Now, the other thing about this club, it was 45 minutes from my home. It was a long drive, and I live in Michigan. So that was, in the wintertime, it's, it's not a good drive. Um, but I said, you know what? I think this club is really open to learning. Now, they had a number of roadblocks in becoming, a, for me to become a member of the club. They had some constraints. It was part of a corporation for a little while. They left the corporation and then they changed the dues structure. And when they did all that, I said, you know, do you guys want to coach? And they said, yes. And I said, okay, let me say, I know that you guys are open to learning. I know that you pay really close attention and you value my feedback. 
that's a big boost to my ego. All right, and then I'm just telling you that. Um, and then um, the other thing was, as I said, am I willing to make the commitment of this drive? One of the benefits was they only meet twice a month. And I said, okay, I think I'm willing to do that. So with all of those things coming together, I said, yes, I'm going to make this commitment and the club is interested. They're making that commitment to me as the club coach. So I reached out to my, my club coach director, was assigned to the club, and things went along okay. Um, my first year there, we got up to maybe nine members and then a couple, you know, another year later, it was maybe 12. We, we didn't grow by the net growth of five. And not always did we hit our distinguished club program points either. We needed to hit five points there. So we didn't get the goal. Now, I told you through Danielle in my introduction that this club made it to 24 members. It did, but it took me four years to get them there. Does that mean you have to make a commitment for four years? No, you don't. All right. But I did because I knew after my second year, when my two years came up, I knew that if I walked away, they probably would fail. Even though we'd done a lot of work, they were up to close to 12 or around, it must have been greater than 12 because I wasn't able to be reassigned. But um, I knew that they wouldn't be successful, that there would still be some serious problems if I left the club. So I decided to stay on. I enjoyed the club. I liked them a lot. And I stayed with them until they finally reached distinguished status. And at that point, I announced my departure and I gave them a couple months notice. So after we hit distinguished, I didn't leave as of July 1st. I stayed on and those new officers that were taking those officer roles took a big sigh of, of, you know, a breath of fresh air, so to speak, and said, thank goodness she's sticking around to make sure I know my new job and that if I have any questions, I can reach out to her. Now, I was still there for them even after I stopped my membership. I was always there. I'm still there for them. If they have questions, they know to reach out to me and they can do that. It's one of the beautiful things of my relationship with that club. It's, it's, it's so beautiful. So when I'm looking at a club to say, do I want to coach them? I do look at, are you willing to learn? And this is the club in general and individuals in particular. And are you interested in a club coach? Sometimes they say, no, I'm not interested in a club coach. And I say, okay you know, um, I'm cheering for you. Let me know if there is something I can do for you. And then the last one is, is am I willing to make this a long-term commitment? Because as if I go back earlier on my slides, I said, one of the things that I really care about is that they won't flounder after I leave my club coach position. I want them to be successful now and for many years into the future. And so that is the commitment that I personally make when I'm coaching a club. No, you don't have to. Um, I do think it's a really good thing, though, because um, you are invested in them. You want to see them succeed. Um, that's what's so beautiful when they finally do. You just, it is such a, a meaningful joy to watch them succeed. Okay, so let's talk about your first visit. It's not always that pretty. I'm going to call it pretty, um, my experience with Brighton. It's not always that pretty. Sometimes you walk in, um, they don't listen to you. We've got some clubs that have been doing it the same way year after year, and they don't do manual speeches. Um, they, they just aren't open to learning. Um, these are difficult clubs to coach, and I'm totally with you on that. There are problems that do crop up along the journey. I'm going to pause again, open it up for questions to see if there's any conversations that you would like to share about your experiences. So I'm unmuting you all again. And if you do want to talk, um, feel free to jump out and do so. Anybody? This is Danielle. I'll jump in. Um, I haven't served as a, an, an official coach to clubs. I, I probably do a lot of coaching to clubs, but just not on a regular basis. But even in my experience as an area director and division director, could you share with us some examples of how do you get those clubs to actually complete their manuals or bring their manuals to the meetings? Mm. Because I find mm -hmm. that a lot of clubs, they're doing the speeches. They're just not completing their manuals. So it looks like they aren't getting any credit for all of the work that they're doing. Well, they're not getting credit, right, Danielle? Right. They're not. They're not right. So, okay. Um, there 
I, I was part of a club. I am, you know, it was my first club actually. Um, some of those people that just don't bring their manuals and they're really good speakers too, but they just don't work the program. That bothers me. And I, I do have a hard time with that one. Um, to me, when we become Toastmasters, we are agreeing to work the program. And that is a promise that we make to our club and we make it as a member. So I will go back to individuals and I'll have a conversation with them to say, why aren't you working the program? Um, it, I'm not always successful in being able to convince them that they should be working the, the program, but I do try. I make it on the individual basis. There are times though I will bring it up to the officers as a group to have a conversation to say, what do we need to do to make some changes? Because we had three speakers tonight and none of them had their manuals. Um, that's a problem. And then sometimes they also have difficulty getting leaders for the meeting. Nobody wants to sign up for Toastmaster or evaluators or, you know, some of the less fun jobs. That's a problem too. And that's where I talk about the competent leader manual and how much education I get when I get honest feedback in that manual about what I could have done better to serve the members that were in attendance at the club. I use the manuals and that allows them to say, oh, wow, she uses the manuals. Maybe I should be using it too. And I talk about my successes along the way. I talk about my failures. You know, I, I'm like, wow, boy, did I screw up last meeting. Um, I can do better this time. And I will. Um, but that's, that's what's really good about this is when I'm working the program, they see that and then they see she really grew in the last year. You know, even though I've been a Toastmaster for nine years, I'm still working the program. And I'm, I don't mean to carry it on to myself, but I use myself as a role model for others. And that is helpful. It's not, it's not perfect, though. There are a lot of people that still don't use the manuals. Oh, okay. This is John Ojefo. Can you Hi, hear John. me? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Uh, I have just been assigned, and I was wanting your input on uh, the lack of communication i have been trying anytime i send email with the president or secretary they hardly respond and in fact for almost two weeks now i sent an email the president has not uh, responded so mm. i i'm not i'm not really sure um even my i was there at the very first meeting um it went on fairly okay uh, but i can see some hesitancy uh, resistance from mm. the president uh, taking some suggestions I, i'm not really quite sure be my first time i'm willing to give it mm -hmm. more time for us to again yeah. uh, interact and but my main problem is lack of communication i thought that by now would at least establish i said i want to meet with the officer so that we can establish uh, um, be on the same page, but no response. Mm -hmm. and I was wondering how do okay. I in the culture? I don't okay. know. If I think that it's a very different culture that I need to be very conversant with, but I'm not too sure. Mm -hmm. John, what I'm hearing a couple of different things that might be cropping up for you, and I'm not positive on it. So um, some of it might be valuable to you, some of it might not. But what I'm hearing is that this lack of communication, you've reached out to the president, they're, he's not responding to you. Um, and I think I also heard that you might be including in your email some suggestions to him um, to improve the club. Is, did I hear that correctly? Yes, just, just, yes, just for us to me, so that at least I can understand, mm -hmm. I can understand them how we can work together uh, to attain okay. the, the club goals uh, because I want to know what they are doing, what they want to do, how they want to do it, and the timeline. Sure. But somebody is actually willing to, okay. and they only meet once a month. If they meet once a month, <laughs> it, takes a, it could take a while before we can. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a heavy load that you're carrying if you only meet once a month to help a club that that's all right so here's a here's a couple of thoughts that are going through my mind as you're sharing your story all right one is be really careful when you're giving suggestions back on how to make some changes at the club and i'm going to talk more about okay. that in a few minutes but when we're giving okay. suggestions i do suggest face to face 
and because okay. you don't you don't know how it's going to be taken by the other person they might interpret that you're criticizing the club or their leadership right. either one is not a good yes. scene so you want to set it up so that you are um they know that you care very much about them and they, okay. you know they know that you are wanting them to individually succeed as a leader and it's really about them okay. it's about your relationship with them to succeed as a leader not necessarily to get the distinguished club points and i know that sounds really strange but when you work with them start especially when you're starting with them start to say i care about you as a leader what do you want to accomplish and i want to learn how to help you get there okay as okay a Great. That would be my suggestion. But once a month for a club that meets once a month, you are going to have a handful here. I highly recommend that you make sure that you join all executive board meetings with the officers. Okay. Um, and you do have to be invited to that. But I sort of invite myself. I say, don't you want your coach there? <laughs> I phrase it in a really positive way, and they always say, "Oh yeah, of course." <laughs> but I, I, I do. See, you know, they might say, "No, we don't want you there," and I do have to respect them if they do. I've never had that situation, but I do. Have, I do know of a couple club coaches that were in a situation that wasn't so positive. The other thing is, is at some point, if it's still not working for you, um, you can have have a frank conversation with the president to say, you know, have I done something to offend you? It's certainly not my intention. I would like us to have a decent working relationship, but if you don't want me as a club coach, tell me, and I'll stop. You know, okay. spinning my wheels because this is not healthy for me. Um, and so I'll put it back on their lap. They said yes to getting a club coach. I hopefully they said yes to getting you as their club coach. Uh, I, that's my okay. best. That's the best view. It doesn't always work out that way. Um, but now that you're assigned as the club coach, if they don't want you, you know, be direct with you it's because you need to be direct with them too. And um, spin it in a positive way. But you know, I like to add humor if I can. And that enables them to be able to say, oh gosh, I'm screwing up. <laughs> and they'll say it to themselves. They won't necessarily say that to you, but they'll say, oh yeah, but of course, <laughs> of course I want you to be part of this, you know? Um, but it just, I don't, I'm not sure what your relationship is with the, the president or the other officers, but do, there are times that you do need to be direct with them. And there are times that if I don't see officer, like especially this time of year when you're saying, hey, it's time for an election, nobody's stepping up to be an officer, any officer, <laughs> I'll have frank conversations with the club. And yeah, you might only have eight members, uh, but I'll say, look, you know, do you want the club to fold? Let's just fold it now, you know, put us out of our misery. Um, or, you know, I'm happy to work with you and I want this club to succeed, but it's really not about me. It's about you because I'm not an, I'm not an officer. I'm not a member. I'm, I'm just simply a coach. All right. So that's, that's a spin that I take with the club as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay. All right, I'm gonna go ahead on. David, if you are trying to talk, um, I did have to mute you because you have some background noise on yours. So I, I've been muting you. If you want to unmute yourself, go ahead and unmute yourself. But meanwhile, I'm gonna go ahead and mute all again. And let's go back into our slides. Okay, so why do clubs fail? Hmm. There's lots of reasons. I thought it would be best though, if we did talk about why they fail. And from my perspective, there's four main reasons. All right, oops, let's see, let's get that slide working. All right, one is that the leaders don't know how to be leaders. And this is really where our job is as coaches to help them be good leaders. I find sometimes they don't delegate well, so they need to learn how to delegate to their officers so that they're not carrying the heavy load by themselves. The other thing that they might do is they might not do the vision you know, setting a, a vision so that the team is all on board together. Um, and leadership, is, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do this, but leadership is critical to the success of any club. They might not be asking for guests to come visit or to convert those guests into members. So the marketing and membership is an area that the clubs tend to fail at too. Do they have a commitment to learn and grow? And if the clubs are not committed to learning and grow, typically they become stagnant 
and eventually they close, eventually. Um, but meanwhile, they die a slow, painful death as a club. I don't like it when clubs fail. I, it makes me, I feel pain. I feel sadness um, when a club fails. And if it's a commitment to learn, I, I find that even sadder because I'm an educator. So I, I don't know. I like to surround my people, but uh, surround myself with people that want to keep getting educated. All right. And then lastly, one of the reasons why a club may fail is because one toxic person got involved in the club and really ruined the relationships that existed in that club. Um, we try to address that toxic person. I'm calling them toxic person. I hope you don't mind, but address it. Um, try to, uh, you know, fix the behavior. And, um, and if not, you can ask, uh, I don't know if I want to go down that path, but you, you can try to address that behavior issue and get them to step up to being a, uh, a good Toastmaster right? or to ask them, you know, listen, if you're not going to work the program, maybe it's best if you not be part of this. So let's talk about your first assignment as a club coach. Once you are assigned, the club many times will expect you to be the magician, that you're going to wave your magic wand and solve all of the problems that they're facing. And they take a breath of relief. Why do I keep stumbling over that phrase? They take this breath of fresh air and they say, oh, our life is going to be good. And you think, oh, my God, what did I sign up for? <laughs> So I like to say, when I come in, I want to set the expectations very clear up front. I'm not a magician. I'm not here to do the work. I'm here to guide the leaders. And so I'm focused on the officers. I'm focused on the leaders. Sometimes I'll give feedback to a Toastmaster, um, a Toastmaster of the day. But my, my job is to help the officers be successful. And so I'm behind the scenes. I, I let the president be president, uh, but I want to make sure that they are doing the work and I'll give them feedback afterwards if they need it um, or talk about the successes as well. So I, I like to set those expectations so that the club officers and members know who I am and what I'm there to do. Now, why do coaches fail? It's not just clubs failing. Sometimes coaches fail. One way is that we fail to listen and understand. And I say listen, it's not just to the words, it's to the message underneath those words. We have to interpret what they're not saying. Um, and sometimes I will pull it out and put it on the table, so to speak. I'll say, you know what I'm thinking I, I hear is this. Is there any truth to that? Is this, is this a problem for you? And once I state it and put it, you know, the elephant, I give it a, you know, the name of elephant, they all, they, they're happy. They're not happy. They're, 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 you can see the weight come off of their shoulders that they were trying to be nice and not say, hey, look, I got, you know, we, we got dirty, un, dirty, whatever, you know, we've got stuff that isn't working. They're embarrassed. And if you're able to pull it out and say, look, it's okay. You know, this stuff happens everywhere. I've seen it happen a lot. And it just makes them feel like, oh, okay, it's okay to have this problem. We're, we're going to get through this. We're going to be okay. Um, the next one is the failure to delegate. I talked about that earlier, but we do have people, individuals that think that they have to do everything or on the other side is somebody who's domineering and they say, you have to do this, this, and this. Um, I've also seen some club coaches come in with this huge list of everything that's wrong with the club. Um, no, that doesn't work. You have to pick and choose. Dear club coaches, you must pick and choose the priorities. Don't give them a long laundry list. Give them the, you know, these are the three things I'd like to see us work on for the next two meetings. I'd like us to make sure we have guests at every meeting. I'd like to see the Toastmaster start on time. And I'd like to see us make sure that we have um, good evaluations coming back to the speakers. All right. Whatever it is that you have on your mind, um, one or two or three things, but don't give them more than that. Um, and also, I don't, I, I specifically sometimes will wait until the person responsible for that, the officer says, I am needing to do that, aren't I? <laughs> I'm like, yep, that's one of your responsibilities. Um, for example, keeping track of the guests is a VP of membership. And once they're ready to take on that additional responsibility, 
then I train them how to do it. But I don't want to overwhelm them. So a lot of times I'll say, this is what you need to do today is just say hello to people when they come in the door and have a, a membership packet ready. Um, and then later you can follow up with emails or follow up with your current members on why they're not um, you know, staying as a member, you know, just to do the things that VP of memberships need to do. I don't throw it all at them at once. I piece it out based on whatever their struggle is and say, okay, let's work on that today. Um, and then they work on it. A third bullet point is the failure to determine alternatives. I mentioned this earlier. Your job is not to solve the problem. Your job is to give them the alternatives and make sure that they have a wide choice, set of choices and then let them choose which alternative they want to select. Um, and be careful about being too negative or too positive. You need to be balanced in your perspective. Do celebrate though. Make sure you celebrate and um, not be too negative at the same time. See, I have a, a chat that has come up. She didn't say that it was. I was just basing it off at the time and where it appears. Um, I have no idea what you're talking about, Tanya. Let me take you off of mute. Hold on. Go ahead, Tanya. I'm sorry, that was supposed to be for Danielle. Oh, oh okay. Is there any question though? No, I don't have a question. Oh, okay, all right. All right then, oops. Then we'll say, oops, one of those. And be okay with saying oops, all right? I, I say oops a lot, and I'm okay with it. And if I'm okay with it, usually other people are comfortable with it. So let's see. All right, now let's talk. I see that we're uh, approaching our time, it's uh, 7.53. So I wanna be able to make sure I get through my content. On this slide, I've got the club coach in the center and I've got a lot of different people centered around the club coach. The club coach director, Danielle is here, district director. And then on the other side, we've got club members, club coaches, I'm sorry, club officers and club guests. All right, all of these people are, are you know, um, the club coach is interacting mostly with the club, but just recognize that you're not in isolation. Down on the bottom, you have your area director and your division director. On occasion, I will email them just to say what we're doing. I, we are doing great on bringing in guests and occasionally we get people to actually sign up to become members. You know, I just tell them what we're doing. We're struggling with X, Y, Z, you know, whatever it is, um, just so that they're aware of what we're doing. Um, I like to keep them in touch. And then on occasion, I might send an email up to the trio, the district director, club coach director, and the program quality director to say, we're going to hit distinguished this year. I know we are. And just to celebrate that, and I copy the, you know, the club officers on it so that they know that I'm celebrating the club's success. All right now also on here, I've listed a club coach chair and a club retention chair. Danielle, do you have, do you, let me, uh, hopefully you're not on, Let's see, Danielle, let me make sure you're not on mute. You're not on mute. Um, do you have a club coach chair? Oh, you're not talking. Oh, wait a minute. I must be, I must have, hmm. all right, I'm taking you off, everybody off of mute. All right, go ahead. Danielle, do you have a club coach chair? Yes, we have a two. Um, two club coach chairs, as well as a team member who also helps with the coordination, Tanya Pritchett, David Clark, and John Cheney. Oh. So the three of them help um, help with the club coach team. Oh, fantastic. And I'll just, just to add, we love it, actually. Um, I know Jill Vanderwhite, I don't know if she's on the call now, she regularly emails me and gives me progress on the status of the club. And it is very helpful when you guys um, – as Carol mentioned, when you send us those emails, we love that because it's probably easier for you to remember to email us than it is for us to email so many different club coaches or what mm -hmm. have you. So mm -hmm. definitely send those emails in with progress. And Becky has done that too. She has sent updates as well. Oh, fantastic. Well, I'm very impressed that you have so many club coach chairs and um, you've got so many helpers here to help you with the success. Now we just need club coaches, right? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, We'll get there, we'll get there. Okay, so I'm gonna briefly talk about my version, my vision of, of what is a club coach chair. Um, in, oh, I gotta put you guys on mute again. All right, my, my vision is that the club coach chair is looking at all of the club coaches and helping train them. 
they say, okay, um, I see that we have three clubs that need coaches and we got a couple people over here in a different community that need to be, that want to be club coaches. All right. So I'll keep them in the back of my mind. Um, but we also have the current assigned club coaches and they need to be trained on occasion or they just need a support group. Let's have a monthly phone call and have these conversations of where their challenges are so that they could talk about it. We can come up with some ideas. Um, uh, I know that on my one of my last assignments as club coach I really needed that additional support I got it from my area director um, and I have many years of experience with Toastmasters um, but there was there was a challenging situation for me and I really appreciated just being able to reach out and have a good shoulder to have a conversation with so that um, I did get the support I needed when I was feeling a bit of a frustration with the team I was coaching um, and that happens you know it's not like I said it's not all positive all right let's see all right, so what sort of resources do we have? Um, when you are assigned as a club coach, and let me go ahead and put my red stars on here, you get in the mail, all right, this is after your official assignment as a club coach, you get in the mail this big package. You get a couple of things in there. It's how to build a club, number 1158, the Distinguished Club Program and Club Success Plan, which is number 1111. The Successful Club Series, How to Be a Distinguished Club, number 299A. And you also get a fancy club coach pin that you can adorn to your jacket. It's, it's beautiful. Now, I want to say that we have in Toastmasters lots of other resources out there. I'm just mentioning a few on here right now. Um, we have the First Class Club Coach, which is number 218F, which I like a lot. We've got Leading a Club to Success, which is number 13131. This is part of the club officer training materials. It's not necessarily part of the club coaching materials, but I found that to be very helpful as well. Another resource that I found helpful is the dashboards.toastmasters.org. And they're both plural, dashboards.toastmasters.org. Um, that website is where I actually got information on how your clubs are doing, which clubs are eligible for getting a club coach, and which ones have been assigned. It's two different parts of the dashboard. So those are resources that I've used um, as I was preparing for this. And I know your district officers use them quite a bit. All right, so let's talk about afterwards. So as, as we approach the Distinguished Club um, program and you've achieved your goals, what happens next? I like to make sure that that club is in good shape. So I don't leave on July 1st. I stay for maybe two months later, making sure that the succession planning is happening, that the new officers have taken their roles and that they don't have any additional questions, that there's a sense of community and that they're feeling comfortable. And then I, I will announce, okay, I, it's time for me to go. Um, you guys are in good hands. I'm always available for you. You have my phone number, reach out whenever you need to. And that gives them a sense of relief. Um, they feel good and they're, they're positive and they're feeling more comfortable that they can do this, confident. All right, at this point, I'm gonna open it up for questions again. And we are at this point wrapped up and I've got this um, team in the middle. We are a team. And then we have this coaching, motivating, training, inspiring, building and mentoring, all aiming in to supporting the team because we are all connected. And that's when I see a club failing, it's, it just makes me so sad because I know a future member is not gonna be able to get that to that club. Um, and they need Toastmasters. So let's turn it back to you. Any questions? No. <laughs> Mention Anne that you say two, three months you stay, but you can join as a group. Yes. Yes, thank you, Mark. Yes, you can. Um, so at once you've officially been assigned by Danielle or um, or your club coach director wherever you um, whichever district you're in you can then become a member it is your choice on whether to become a member or not um, there's one club I'm coaching right now I'm not eligible to become a member and that happens you know if you're working with restricted club membership um, now I also say be careful on becoming a leader or an officer of the club now if you're down to about three or four members you probably need to step in as an officer do not take the role of president and ideally don't take the role of vice president of education um, I like to have 
you know, you are the coach, so you need to be coaching the leaders. You don't want to be the leader, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that's well, my I, perspective. I like the behind the scene type of leadership. I call it servant leadership, but that's mm -hmm. behind. yes, that's that's a beautiful term. Other questions? This is Tanya. I don't have a question, but I just wanted to respond. I was driving, so uh -huh. I couldn't respond earlier to Rebecca. Yeah. Um, Rebecca, I was able to visit your um, the DHSS last week, and they actually had a pretty good turnout, comparatively speaking, since they only have two members, but they had uh, five people, a couple of people who had come back who had been members before, and then one person who was a guest. And Jill's presentation on doing the open house and planning for the open house, they seemed really excited about that. Um, one of the things that we talked about a lot was uh, time change. And Jill has suggested probably not doing, implementing that until um, the next year in July, just because we only have a couple of meetings left and wanting to do the open house and everything. Mm -hmm. But they seemed open to that too. So I just wanted to let you know that as their coach as well. Thank you, Tanya. I was wondering when you would say that, but thank you. And I hope that they, they join and, um, you know, I hope because the problem is that we, they have a lot of guests and they don't join. And that, that was what I found with it. I don't know if they have good member packets or not. Hmm. Okay. Well, I didn't notice that they gave him a member packet, but um, I know they, they did have some magazines that they had passed around as well. So that might be something to suggest to them also just to have guest member packets. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Now, I, I sometimes have questions about, um, you know, sh should we change the time of the meeting? Um, one person was adamant that the club would not be successful meeting at seven o'clock in the morning. Um, and I said, no, I, I know of clubs that are very successful at seven o'clock in the morning. Um, so it's not necessarily the time of day that causes a club to be unsuccessful or the meeting location. Well, I'm going to put a little caveat there because it could be the meeting location um, or the day of the week. If it's good for the members, then keep it where it is. Um, but if the meeting time is not good for the members, by all means, make an adjustment. But let the members make that choice. Um, try to stay out of that as a club coach. Now, my little caveat on meeting location is as you grow, you probably are going to need a new location. Um, so when you get your club, when it's really small, you might be in a smaller room. Um, always set it up so that you can have at least five guests come in without being squished. That's my suggestion. And so if you are normally, let's say you have a club size of 12, usually only eight people show up. Let's suppose you have, um, make sure you have about, 15 chairs, um, you know, 14 to 15 chairs all around that table, or if you have it theater style, that you've got enough chairs that you're not feeling squished in that room. Okay, a any additional questions? Uh, this is the, uh, the slides will be available on the, the website. Yes. I well, I'm going to be giving the entire recording to Danielle, and then she'll share that with you and everybody was online tonight, as well as anybody else who might be interested in the future. She'll have access to that, and um, you can either, Danielle, you can put it out on your website, uh, your district website, or however else you, you want to share that with your people. We will be putting it on the District 36 website along with two other podcasts that Carol has provided oh. me with as well. So you guys will have a wealth of information to Excellent. refer back to. Excellent. I, I actually okay. was... I was thinking of the podcast tonight because they are different from what I presented today. Um, and I really enjoyed listening to listening back to them again. Um, there's some good content in there. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It was thank you, Danielle, and thank you for the coach team for planning this really good opportunity. Oh, you're welcome. Now I've included yeah. my 
I've included my email address down here at the bottom. If you do have more questions, um, either Danielle or any of you have additional questions for me, uh, it sounds like you're a pretty knowledgeable team already, but if you are at any point wanting to say, what else can we do? This isn't working. Um, by all means, reach out to me and I'll, I'll give you whatever thoughts I might have on this topic. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I'm cheering thank for you. you. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. cheering for you and your successes. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Well, uh -huh. Carol, thank you on behalf of District 36 for doing this for us. And uh -huh. hopefully um, you guys learned a lot of information tonight or it helped to reiterate some of the information that you already know or you've been inspired, you've gotten some great ideas about how we can be more effective coaches. And I hope that this will also have inspired you to want to meet Carol, mm -hmm. and perhaps you will see her at the convention yeah. in Canada this year. I am so. attending. Are you guys attending? Yeah. Yes. Oh, good. Well, definitely. Let's get together. <laughs> definitely. You guys, you you haven't you've seen you've heard her on the phone, but you do not understand how much energy this woman has oh. and. When she is in front of the room, the energy is contagious. So thank you so much, Carol. Oh, thank you, Danielle. That's awesome. Uh, all right. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the recording. Is there anything? Yeah, you mean at the conference, and Danielle, you mean at the con Carol, or you'll be at the conference on May 20? That's it. No, no the convention. The international oh, at the convention. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. the convention okay. in, in, in okay. Vancouver. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. I'm Thank you go very much for the energy. Oh, yeah. Yes. You're yeah. welcome. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all. We have actually run over our time.